A week ago, I had never heard the name Jacqueline Novak. It happened last Tuesday evening, actually, as I was starting to think about what this video you're watching right now would be about. I had just seen the Korean action film Ashfall, which was a maybe. I had kept canceling the tickets I would get to go see Cats, so that ship seems to have long since sailed. I didn't know. Mostly, I was just frustrated that various distributors and networks had decided to release three movies I'm excited about, as well as conclude two beloved TV shows that I have actually talked about on this channel all at once this Friday, giving me far too much to talk about next week and leaving me with not much for today. And it was as I lamented all of this that I saw a Subway ad with a John Mulaney quote, a Natasha Lyonne presentation, and a Mike Birbiglia credit. Sure, this ad has probably been up for weeks, if not months by this point, since the show has apparently been running since last July, but I live in New York. This entire city is a gosh damn ad, and I'm not sorry for tuning it out most of the time. I'm a huge fan of all of those people, so even though I had never heard of the actual performer, I didn't need to. I bought a ticket for later in the week, and separately, a copy of Novak's 2016 memoir of sorts, How to Weep in Public, Feeble Offerings on Depression from One Who Knows, which I blazed through in preparation. Hello, by the way, and welcome to the Week Air Review. You can call me easily persuaded. And today, I am talking about Jacqueline Novak's one-woman show, Get On Your Knees. It seems to me that the past decade or so has given rise to a more long-form storytelling type of comedy that also doesn't necessarily feel like it must be funny. Of course, one-person shows are very old and comedy as narrative is too, but it definitely feels new-ish that so many comedians are doing extended runs in off and off-off Broadway houses in Lower Manhattan. Hell, Mike Birbiglia, who is probably most responsible for this whole thing, brought his latest show, The New One, to Broadway itself for 99 performances last year. Which is wild. So it's not nothing that Berbiglia's name shows up as an executive producer in Novak's Not Playbill. Her show began its run last year at the Cherry Lane Theater, which is the same venue I saw Hassan Minaj perform Homecoming King at back in 2016, and is now finishing its time here at the Lucille Lortel, formerly home of the MCC Theater, slash place where I have seen some really exceptional stuff. Novak's stage is bare, just a microphone in a spotlight. While there is a stool with a drink on it, it is off to the side in shadow, and I didn't even notice it until she took her first sip. She's introduced by Madonna's Like a Prayer, as the lights ever so briefly go wild. For a moment, you might wonder if this is a genuine hype builder or something delightfully ironic. But of course, it's the latter. Novak emerges slowly and quietly says, Hey guys, into the mic. No big entrance for her. That whole process of coming out and walking to the mic, she says, reminds her of going down a person's abdomen for the first time. The anticipation when everyone knows what is about to happen, but is a little unsure of how it's going to go. And that's what the show's about. Maybe doing some more research would have been smart, but we're in it now. The subject matter explains the knee pads, one of which is visible through a large rip in her washed-out jeans. She holds open the tear and points at it. They're new, she tells us. I hope that means recently replaced as opposed to an entirely new addition, since she makes great use of them as the uh, performance progresses. Also of note, her hair is in a high ponytail, which I actually went in looking for because of something that she says in her book. I always wear a cheerleaderly high pony. The ponytail counteracts the grimness of your otherwise expressionless face. It's like putting a bow on a rotting apple. Certainly worth a try. <laughs> it's a great book, albeit one that seems to exist in an entirely separate world from herself. Indeed, she only mentions once in the couple of hundred pages that she is a comic, and she never once mentions her depression on stage. Which is strange, considering how fundamental that would have been to a lot of the stories that she tells. The knowledge that, although she is clearly doing pretty well at the moment, that a 
she and I share a prescription, definitely changes the way that I experienced some of her jokes. It also helped to explain her specific and awkward style of delivery, one that wasn't quite so present in her previously recorded appearances. Novak walks back and forth constantly, almost never stopping, and she spends at least as much time looking at the floor as she does the audience. And even when she's looking up, you can tell she's often looking at the walls rather than people. She seems distracted by the things around her. She stopped the show twice to untangle the XLR cable attached to her microphone, because clearly it was bothering her. The precision of her language comes up a couple of times as a punchline, but that's notable because the speech isn't nearly as polished as you would expect from someone who has done this literally hundreds if not thousands of times before. She rushes and pauses and cuts off and corrects herself a lot. I realized about halfway through that this must be what my employees experience every time I talk during a team meeting, only without the funny. And that was a terrible realization. But the more terrible realizations came for me in the content, because this is another show that targets men's vulnerabilities, and I remain a fairly vulnerable man. But, and this is important, it is not a show that is targeted at men. You see, Novak laments here, and also in her Comedy Central special, which we'll get to in a bit, that she is a heterosexual woman. You know, such a travesty to be so simple, like, does she even read books? But the fact that she is straight means that her punchlines about men ring differently than when, say, Hannah Gadsby makes them. Because Novak has a fundamentally different relationship with men, in that she is in a romantic relationship with a man. So when she talks about how pathetically sensitive men are, it comes from a place of love, sort of. And that kind of makes it hurt more. But the thing is that this show is very clearly not written for men. We are allowed to pay to see it, of course, but it's not written with us in mind. I mean, that should be obvious enough from the subject. Not a lot of men are willing to put penises in their mouth. Like, sure, I've been offered the opportunity, but much to the surprise of many YouTube commenters, it's not one I've taken. And so I can't really relate to a lot of the more inside baseball sections of Get On Your Knees. But it's actually the structure that emphasizes who this show is for. If you look at, say, Nanette, or even more explicitly Daniel Sloss's X, there is a clear logic to the progression. Put a frog in cold water and slowly turn up the heat so he never realizes that he's boiling. In order to convince the intended audience of a thing, that's how it has to go. It can't feel like an attack, or the person will just shut off. Novak isn't trying to convince anyone of anything, so she just jumps right on it. If you don't also think that men are weak and insecure, then you're going to check out pretty much immediately. And even if you are a man who does, she's still going to cut through that wokeness and make you bristle at the implications. It comes off as almost combative, those barrage of insults hurled at the penis and the person that it's awkwardly dangling off of until she stops really talking about that for, like, most of the rest of the runtime. Frankly, Get On Your Knees just isn't as concerned with men as I thought a show about sex with men would be. And the fact that I was being all about me at the start? Well, point made and taken. <laughs> As I said, I am new to Jacqueline Novak's work, so this past week has been me catching up on things. I listened to her 2014 album, Quality Notions, watched her Comedy Central half hour that's actually 20 minutes, as well as the various late night appearances on YouTube. And while I generally enjoyed all of it, I was struck by the amount of repetition between the sets. I have always been frustrated by hearing someone tell the same jokes over multiple performances. The only comedian I saw at the New York Comedy Festival this past November who I didn't make a video about was Nate Bargatze. I think he's super funny and enjoyed his show, but didn't have much to say about it other than how strange the ending was. About an hour in, he just stopped doing new jokes. And, and he told us, 
it was happening that he was out of new material, so he was going to go back to some of his old favorites, finishing with the uh, coffee with milk bit that he thinks he will be doing until the day he dies. And, like, cool. Except I had rewatched his earlier specials that day, so I didn't really need or want to hear it again. It was a pretty weak note to end on. And so I guess it felt like a weak note to start on when Novak came out and introduced herself as a former poet who got bored of seeing the moon as if for the first time each night. Because she'd already done that one. And it had a different punchline the first time around, but it definitely took me out of the experience to hear that same setup. And the heterosexual as simpleton thing, and all of the others. Sometimes they were expansions of an earlier premise, others... It's just the same joke again, as in the discussion of her preferred nomenclature for that most noble of positions, the Hound's Way. All of these jokes are really funny the first time. But I actually groaned once or twice when I realized that I was getting them again. This isn't really Novak's fault, and most of the bits have a specific relevance in the context of this show that they didn't have when they were just one-off jokes in previous sets, and this show is better for having them, but I can't pretend like it wasn't frustrating nonetheless. In that sense, Get On Your Knees is like the culmination of the stand-up work that Novak has been doing, and I hope that she knows that she's finally perfected those jokes so she can move on to something new. 8.1 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you particularly to my patrons, my mom, Hamray and Marco, Kat Saracata, Benjamin Schiff, Anthony Cole, at Blasian FMA, Magnolia Denton, and Elliot Fowler. If you like this video, it's great. If not, I'm sorry. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I hope to see you next week.